Hello, hello, how are you all? Um, just coming to you from Lake Taupo. Um, there's a bit of the lake there and a bit of the township and I'm just sitting on some rocks here just enjoying the scenery while I'm walking the dog and out here for a while just to um, contemplate um, a lot of things that are coming up for me and apart from resting which I'm still called to rest at the moment um, my body feels like it's been hit by a tsunami and I know there's a lot of solar flares, X-class solar flares at the moment um, and it's huge and everybody's feeling it, even uh, my daughter and my son-in-law, uh, my son, everybody I talk to is feeling this huge wave of tiredness going on at the moment and yeah we're just called to rest so rest if you can rest if you can sit down on a rock near you in a place like this in a beautiful beautiful countryside um, near where I'm living sit down on a rock sit down on the grass sit down with the trees I'm soon to walk through the trees um, just sit down and, and rest and um, just ground, ground yourself in nature um, because that's what we're here called, called here to do. We were given the trees and the nature and the beautiful lands in our world, we were gifted them by Mother Nature to sit in them and to rest in them and to imbibe the treasures that nature's got for us, the beautiful uh, smells of the aroma of that rich earth. Um, yeah, I, I just can't get enough of it. I just love that earth smell um, of rich, moist humus, humus layers. <laughs> you know, the leafy layer um, uh, that falls under the trees and forms years and years of composted leaves that turns into a beautiful humus, rich humus that the trees feed on. And the macorysis, the mycelium, um, um, of the roots, they symbolically live in the roots, the fungi, and they feed on that humus layer, they need that humus layer, they need the moisture, the water and the soil to feed the roots and dilute all the nutrients in that um, humus layer, leaf, leaf matter. So it's a beautiful relationship actually, a beautiful relationship. Um, they live in community with one another, they talk to one another through the mycorrhizal um, network. Um, it's like an interweb for the trees and the trees send messages, food, healing, whatever they need to do um, to heal each other and to help each other grow and hold hands with their roots so that they can grow together in harmony as a community and that's a life lesson for us humans that we need to do that we need to be in community and live in harmony with each other um, as we reach out so um, yeah it's it's often taken for granted you know that um, the trees are often oh this rock is getting bumpy on my my bottom um, it's often taken for granted um, oh yeah it's just a tree it's just standing there doing nothing uh, birds might fly in it and they might lay a nest in it or build a nest and lay eggs or something like that they they might or they might be a purpose for like a windbreak shelter belt um, they might have nuts and seeds we can eat oh what else fruit yeah yeah they're beneficial for us humans yeah of course they are of course they are. They do all of that and so much more. You know, they they do anchor the ground, especially um, on really hilly spots, um, like over yonder, um, over there, where there's big valleys and deep valleys, like I'm sitting on the top of a hill, and it's a big, huge valley below me. And yeah, they anchor the ground so the ground's not going to slip away and the house is not going to fall down um, below because 
it happens, it happens a lot in New Zealand. A lot of cliff top places, the houses are, are falling off them, especially on the, the seaward side. The houses are literally falling off the cliffs because the trees have been cut down or blown away in the winds and the sea and the, the storms as well. Um, so the trees are there for anchoring, anchoring us and anchoring the ground. So for us to ground ourselves, in a way we're giving back to the trees to say, we love you trees, we love what you're doing, we love where you are, what you're doing in your, your world, in your place, in your place to call home, wherever that tree is. We honour you, we see you, and yeah, we are really happy that you're there holding our cliff up. We're holding our ground up and supporting us. Because without you, it would be a very expensive retaining wall. <laughs> a very expensive one and huge engineering costs and um, shoring up ground with big rods drilled into the, the cliff face. So all that's really expensive. It's much cheaper to plant a tree. Much cheaper. And a tree will do the job. Some tree roots are amazing, like the New Zealand Purukawa. It can grow on the side of rocks like this, on the side of a cliff beside the sea, and virtually have no soil. It just digs its way into the, the crevices of the rocks, into the nooks and crannies of the rock, and finds a little crack or gap, and then embeds its little tiny hair roots into that rock, into those gaps and those hair roots grow and then they grow into like big huge roots that look actually look like branches so the tree looks like it's got branches down below it but they're actually roots and they're exposed roots which is even more interesting because they're exposed to the salty air of the sea so it's yeah it's quite interesting oh there goes the dog money money Come here. Money, come here. <laughs> Money. <laughs> Money. <laughs> Money, come here. <laughs> the dog's gone a wall. Money, come here. Money! Money! Thank you! Money! 